Okay, we're going to get started. So again, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, my name is Mary Beth Chevry. I'm one of the counselors on staff in the Office of Admission at Boston College. And uh, we just want to extend our sincerest congratulations to you students and your families um, about this time. And, and obviously, as you're weighing offers of admission to wonderful colleges and universities, we're grateful that you've taken time out of your busy schedules to spend an hour with us. Our Boston College alumni panel features um, different parts of the country. And so we're thrilled to uh, put a spotlight on um, the Midwest and the Rocky Mountain region um, for you. And so even for students that may be joining us from other parts of the country, I think it's important for you to have uh, diverse interactions with our alumni. Um, so whether or not you've lived in this part of the country before or may find yourself here after college graduation, um, to know that the Boston College Alumni Network is very vibrant and very much a part of um, the student experience too. So from when students are admitted to when they're undergraduates and of course post-graduate um, life. So what we're going to try to do for you at the next hour is to um, give you kind of a flavor of that alumni network and starting off with alumni um, introductions. So our panelists will share important pieces of information about themselves, like their name, um, what they studied at Boston College, uh, what they've been able to do with their careers since graduation, and if maybe that has included any graduate programs. Um, so we're just going to start off with those those introductions and, and reflections. So um, uh, uh, Bridget, you just joined us. I don't want to put you on the spot. So we could we could definitely have you go after if you prefer or if you're ready to go. Um, the floor is yours. Great. Yeah, I'm happy to jump in. Hi, Thank everyone. You. So good to be with you all. And um, my name is Bridget McDermott. Um, I'm originally from Washington, New York, where I went to Paul D. Schreiber High School. And then I studied philosophy and communications at BC and I graduated as a member of the class of 2015. And after graduation, I pursued a program that was a mix of uh, post-grad service and teaching called ACE Teaching Fellows. So I actually taught uh, for two years at the fourth grade level in an underserved Catholic school in Dallas, Texas. And during that time, I was working towards a fully funded Master of Education degree from Notre Dame. Um, that's where the program uh, is affiliated. And for the past few years, I've actually been able to work in higher education for the ACE program handling a lot of our admissions work, supporting our current teachers, engaging their, them in their um, MED curriculum. So been able to explore a lot of different things and BC certainly set me up for that. So just excited to, to share more about my experience tonight. Danny, would you like to, to share? Sure. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Danny Blatt. I graduated BC in 2004 with a, a degree in psychology, um, originally from the East Coast. So I grew up in the DC metro area before moving to Boston. And after graduating, I found myself out in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so I, I kind of made the opposite move that some of you might be making. But uh, after graduating BC, I attended grad school, got a master's degree in sports psychology, and then went into consulting with uh, instructional design. So I did training and development. And I, I think Everything that I've done after BC has been a cakewalk. It, BC has just set me up for success in life. And so I, I'm looking forward to talking more about that as the night goes on. Thank you, Danny. Noah. Oops. Hey, everyone. Uh, Noah Barrett, um, uh, originally uh, from New Hampshire, a small town in New Hampshire. Uh, I was an econ major at Boston College. I graduated in 2002 um, from the uh, College of Arts and Science, um, was also in the honors program. Um, and after graduating from BC uh, in 2002, um, I went to Morgan Stanley and worked in the credit department there for four years. Um, uh, left New York um, and moved to Chicago, uh, got my MBA from the Chicago uh, Booth School of Business, graduated there in 2008. Um, stayed in Chicago for a while, and then um, in 2014, end of 14, uh, moved to Denver, uh, where I currently live uh, and work now. Thank you, Noah. And Noah, and last but certainly not least, uh, the McMahons. 
Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, again, uh, congratulations, everyone, on your acceptance to BC. And uh, hopefully you'll learn some great information tonight. And uh, so just uh, thrilled to be here and uh, participate with all of you. So uh, my wife and I, uh, so my name is RJ, and uh, this is my wife, uh, Roberta McMahon. We both graduated from BC in 1986, uh, so a little bit uh, before uh, our colleagues here on this call. And uh, so we live in Chicago, outside Chicago in Forest Park, Illinois. And uh, I graduated with a uh, major in econ and uh, Roberta graduated from uh, the uh, College of Arts and Sciences with an English major. And uh, we both uh, moved on to get master's degrees, mine uh, an MBA from Loyola and uh, Roberta grabbed an MBA or a master's in education from American University in DC. And uh, so we both work in nonprofit education uh, right now uh, here in Chicago. Uh, I run a nonprofit, small nonprofit in the intellectual and developmental disability world. Um, and then uh, Roberta is the head of HR for a small Catholic uh, university here outside Chicago. And in addition to, be in addition to being graduates, we're also uh, parents of alums. So I'll hand it over to my bride. Uh, yes, we have um, two, uh... Two kids. Um, our son Patrick is the class of 2013, the sesquicentennial mm -hmm. class of 2013. Um, he is living in Chicago. He is um, in the digital marketing space. And um, our daughter Rhea is class of 2014 and actually has a master's in higher ed from BC also. Um, she did her grad assistantship in um, the Office of Student Admission. So mm -hmm. she is a um, an admissions uh, assistant director at Fordham right now. So, um, and she uh, married a Boston College alum as well. So um, we are proud uh, in-laws to another 2014 alum. And so I would be remiss to say that so many of our alumni panelists are not only generous with their time for this evening, but it's throughout the year. They host admitted student receptions in person when we're able to do so and they're all very much looking forward to return to that so if you end up coming to Boston College and are from the greater Denver area or Chicago area um, next year you will likely be contacted by <laughs> our alumni host to see if you'd be willing to give your time because it is that enthusiasm that extension um, that we really do rely on so much at, at Boston College and Really kind of, I always say to students when they arrive at um, on our campus is that BC is a place about relationships. And even for a mid-sized institution, you're going to find that through your professors, the administrators that you work with, and most importantly, your peers, your roommates, your friends, that you're not just building a network, but you're building a lifetime of connection um, that is truly formative for you. So this is a big wind up to uh, my first question about formative education. And for if some of you would like to share some reflections about your BC experience and what if there was a moment, a class that you took or a general experience or some a group of friends that you met that really were instrumental um, to your growth and, and you feeling as though you're part of the fabric of university life. Before we do kick off, I do want to um, remind uh, our audience that we invite you to share Q uh, your questions with us. So there's a Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen, a phrase that you have heard far too much over the past 12 months. But just in case we need a little refresh, that is where you're going to post any questions that you have for our panelists. So um, just uh, pivot back to that question on, on formation. So if anybody would like to share their thoughts, that would be great. I'm happy to, to start off here. Um, I think something that you'll you'll soon hear if you decide to commit to BC is this idea of cura personalis, and it's very much rooted in the Jesuit tradition, uh, or it, its term is a kind of care of the whole person. And I think throughout my experience at BC, that just proved to be true over and over again, that the professors and mentors that I found were so attentive to, of course, like my intellectual development and the education that I was receiving, but also to the person that I was becoming and helping me to really discern like how could I use this amazing educational experience that I had at BC and actually do something really good with it. Um, so something that really I think 
formed my first year was this course that I took called Perspectives on Western Culture. And it uh, fulfilled part of my philosophy and theology core requirements. And it was just navigating all these great thinkers. And it, it centered on this question of what is the best way to live. And um, I don't know if I ever had really grappled with that question and to have that at the beginning of my time of college to really think about, well, what is this life that I wanna cultivate and how can I seek out courses and experiences that help me to kind of move in that direction? I think um, there was always just people that I could turn to for that support, but I loved being challenged in that way to really think about what I wanted to do at BC, but also beyond my four years. I don't know that I had one formative experience. I mean, just it's looking back, there's so much. There, there's so many little nuggets. And I'm sure if we were to talk for another three hours, I'd come up with 15 more. But I, I think the best one that I can come back to is just the idea of the liberal arts education. The idea that you learn how to learn, you learn how to be adaptable, you learn how to grow and, and fit yourself into uncomfortable situations where you can then grow from them. I entered BC as a computer science major. And I realized shortly after that, that's not what I wanted to be because I was exposed to so many other options. And having the freedom and the flexibility to explore and, and figure out what it is that really excited me, I think just gave me passion and permission to continue that into my life. Yeah, maybe echoing on some of Danny's comments there, you know, I think. One of the, the things um, that I, it's hard to pinpoint an exact moment um, or, or a specific thing, you know, particularly formative, but um, I just think the liberal arts education, um, you know, for me in, in the College of Arts and Sciences was, was really important, but also, you know, getting to know students that were in the School of Education, the School of Nursing, the Business School. Um, I really appreciated too the way, you know, BC organized the dorms by year. And so it was, um, you know, it's a really special place where, and the size of the school, I think is also important where you, you don't know everyone, but it's not so overwhelming that you feel like you don't know anyone. Um, and so being, you know, in a situation where, you know, the average cl class size, say, you know, between 2000, 2500 people, at least when I was there, um, it just felt like a really nice size. And you got to meet people all over the country, all over the world with totally different backgrounds and totally different experiences. Um, but at the same time, you always felt like you were in a safe place. And, um, you know, it was just a really, it was really, it was a really great environment, I think, to, to get to know a lot of different people, um, but also to get to know them really, really well, uh, because the class sizes were small. Um, and a lot of, you know, people, not just, not just uh, the academic classes, but a lot of the volunteer opportunities as well. Um, they were small groups. And so I think that's where, where you had the best opportunity to uh, to form some really meaningful relationships. I, I think I'll just piggyback on that in terms of just, um, you know, for certainly for us, it has been um, about relationships. It's um, been about the people we met there and um, the people our children met there. You know, uh, this would be our, our 35th class reunion and um, we're not having it in uh, this year. Um, we'll do something virtual. Mm -hmm. But you know, I guess looking back, we can say that um, the people that we met there at Boston College have shared in the abundant joys and some of the some of the harder times in our actual lifetime. And so um, that has been probably the biggest gift that Boston College gave um, gave us. We already have a couple of questions. Well, actually one is a comment, a little shout out to the McMahons. Um, there's a person in our audience from OPAC. So uh, so your next door neighbors are, are represented well. Um, so a, a question that did come in is, I think kind of tied to what we're already talking about here with a formational piece is how your BC degrees have traveled how well they have traveled um, for you. Is the alumni network strong outside the New England and Northeast area? I, I can answer that now quickly, easily, hopefully. Um, when I moved to Colorado, I didn't know a soul. I, I kind of came out here on a lark. It seemed like a great place to be. And I just packed up the car and drove out. When I got here, it started sinking in that I didn't know a soul. 
And I found the alumni network in Denver and it happened to watch football games around the corner from my house. And so I started going, met some great lifelong friends. It, it, it Having that connection at BC, it, it's like you've fast forwarded your relationships with people. Um, and so just instantly I felt amongst family, I, even though I was 2000 miles away from home. So much that I am now actually the president of the alumni group out here in Denver, uh, just because it, it stuck around. Um, since then, you know, people have come and gone, networkings, I've seen jobs, I've seen marriages, I've seen any number of things. And I would say that Colorado's alumni group is smaller than a lot of other states. And yet we are so robust and so diverse that I would say, no matter where you go in the world, chances are you're gonna run into someone who's an eagle. Yeah, my experience um, on that, you know, uh, after leaving BC, so I've lived and worked in New York, Chicago, and now Denver, um, and, you know, each city kind of different uh, alumni base, uh, both in terms of, you know, size and also occupations. Um, but I, th I think the, the biggest thing is that, you know, even in Denver, uh, it's a growing city, but the alumni uh, network here might be a little bit smaller, obviously, than, say, New York. But the thing that I found is, you know, um, people are always willing to help. And so, when you when you are in a new city, uh, like Danny was saying, if you if you don't know people, um, or you know you're looking for either career advice or or you know just trying to make those personal connections, I, I I've always found that um, BC alumni, you know, of any city I've lived in, people are always just they want to help other other BC alums, and so that's been that's been a really great thing to see, and something you know kind of hope to to carry on, and I always try and make it a point, you know, if a BC alum reaches out to me about. Uh, something Denver specific or, or something in, in finance on investing um, that, you know, I can kind of pay it forward and, and help them out as well. Yeah, I would say that was my experience. Like it was so helpful and I was discerning like what I was going to do after college to know that I had a lot of people that I could just reach out to and everyone that I did was so happy to pick up the phone, email back and forth. I think there's just that excitement of getting to talk about BC with someone and now I've kind of experienced it on the other side being, you know, a, a number of years out getting to support recent graduates. Um, I, I found a great alumni group in, in Dallas, Texas uh, when I was teaching down there, have the proximity to, to Chicago. Actually, like the other day, I found out someone in my apartment building is a VC grad because she was wearing a shirt. So you find people wherever you go. It, it is totally true. And it's always fun to be able to have that, that shared experience with them. Yeah, and just to <clears throat> kind of echo uh, our fellow BCers, um, you know, I think what, what we've seen over the course of time, so again, we graduated in 86, uh, the name recognition, the appreciation and understanding of a BC education has only grown exponentially. Um, so, you know, folks know without a doubt what, what and who Boston College is, and more importantly, what Boston College alums bring to the table. Um, and I see that day in and day out, uh, certainly in my interactions. And Chicago's got a great network, um, young and old like us, uh, you know, we, we still can participate in the same events. So it's great. I think it's also been really nice, you know, as Mary Beth said, we've hosted um, admissions events in our home for probably 15, 20 years, probably longer than that. Um, and we see people all the time who say something like, oh my God, I went to your house and I met my college roommate there. And so, you know, it's really, when you when you're not in the New England area, it's exciting when you when you see a BC person, and it's really fun to to chat. And you find that no matter what class you were in, you have a lot in common. So that's really 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 nice. Wonderful. We, the Q and A questions are coming through. So and thank you to our audience for your participation because you're driving the content here, and we really appreciate your participation. Um, just kind of go, kind of going back to something that you've all pretty much touched on is the value of the liberal arts education. And while it's it's you're not in the place that you can necessarily compare that to other universities, but maybe for you specifically, were there aspects that or class that you took that um, Bridget, you mentioned perspectives. Um, that maybe surprised you about being what it was like to be under this umbrella of a liberal arts college, but still be part of a major research university. 
um, were there aspects of the curriculum or just even the maybe a little bit more of the, the freedom that you had even with a core curriculum in place? So um, I came into BC as kind of like undeclared, I would say I really didn't know what direction I wanted to go in. Um, and that's why I, I actually found the liberal arts approach in the core curriculum to be extremely helpful because throughout my whole first year, I was able to just take a lot of different types of classes and see what I enjoyed. So I was in that philosophy and theology class that I mentioned. I was also taking an English course. Um, I was also in a math and a science class. Um, so I was just exposed to a lot of different subject areas. And again, it just gave me some time to keep thinking about what I wanted to study, what I was really excited about and passionate about. Um, and at the same time, I didn't feel like it was off track because obviously this was a big part of, you know, why I was there and, and the exploration was very much a part of the experience. So I found that to be really helpful. And I, and I don't think I realized how much that core was going to guide me in ultimately finding my areas of study. Yeah, I, I started at BC. So I, I started out as an econ and psychology double major and then quickly realized that the psychology part required taking all these orga you know, organic chemistry classes. And it wasn't just the super fun sociology part of it. There was a lot of like uh, medical science to that, which my brain isn't wired for. Uh, so I dropped the psychology major and, and focused on, on econ. But um, I think that broad-based liberal arts background was, was really important because you, you Again, a lot of people, you know, coming into college at 17, 18 years old, you don't necessarily know what you want to do. And so being able to explore and, and look at a lot of different things um, for me was was really valuable. Um, you know, where I am now career wise, like in hindsight, like, you know, you would say, OK, I maybe should have been in the business school. But at the time, like I didn't know that that's what I wanted to do. And so um you know, the economics uh, curriculum was fantastic. It wasn't as, you know, finance specific as what you get in the business school, um, but it was also, you know, it certainly didn't inhibit kind of where I ended up. Um, and, and it was just really fun. You got to take a lot of like, really interesting different classes. And I think that that also helped too, you know, when interviewing for jobs coming out of college, but even for uh, business school and, you know, second and third jobs, um, being able to relate, you know, a lot of the BC experiences and having that diverse background um, was, was certainly an asset. Bridget and Noah talk so much about the course diversity and just how much variety is available to everyone. But I think something that kind of might go unsaid is location. BC is in an awesome place. If, if you want to be in Boston, you can be there in 15, 20 minutes. If you want to stay outside and in the town, and enjoy a beautiful campus, you can. And it, it, it's really just in this unique place of location and athletic conference and scholastic work and spirituality. There is just such an enormous blend that makes it so unique that you'd be hard pressed to find, I think, anywhere else. I just wanted to piggyback on what Noah had mentioned um, in terms of um, the diversity of classes. Um, so both of our kids were in CSUN and the uh, Carroll School of Management, and um, they still had to um, engage in the core curriculum. And I think that was really, really good for them. Uh, it used a different side of their brain and um, it really gave them an opportunity to hone their communication skills. Um, and so I think mm -hmm. that, that was that was a true valuable piece uh, for being in CSUN to have that core curriculum. Right, and I think, you know, Kind of looking back and, and what BC did for for us, you know, we, we've continued to be lifelong learners and, and, you know, the willingness and interest in continuing our skills. Um, and, you know, so you're, you're up for debates, you're challenged in the classroom, you're challenged with your, your friends and, you know, in your dorms. And, and, and it just, it really teaches one to to just kind of push the limit and, and push your comfort zone. And I think BC did a really good job for us, for our kids. Um, and we see it every time we run into a, an alum uh, here in Chicago or elsewhere. Well said, there's this intentionality behind our students that when they're looking at schools and ultimately join the university and, 
and really take advantage of the options, whether it be the liberal arts curriculum, internships, research programs, study abroad, um, but also the residential piece, you know, RJ, which you were just mentioning. Um, it's something that's it's quite special. And for our audience that may not be aware of this, uh, uh, an interesting uh, statistic that I love to share with students is the fact that UC does not require campus residency at any point. Um, but by tradition um, and the students that gravitate towards our campus, it is very popular. In fact, we see that more than 90% of our seniors choose to live on campus every year. When it's not required, it's by choice. It says a lot about the community. So when just kind of thinking about too, for, for some many of our students in the audience uh, this afternoon slash evening, um, they may be wondering about um, maybe not so much weather if they're from uh, the Midwest and the, the Rocky Mountains, but they may have some questions about culture um, and uh, beyond accents and, and uh, driving skills that may send somebody into a state of fright. Um, but if there are other things that you found in, and uh, relocating or even just coming from your home state and coming to the Boston area um, and what that was like for you and, and how you found that transition. So I, I mentioned earlier, I, I grew up on the East Coast, so DC to Boston wasn't a big hop. Um, so I, I don't know how well I can talk to what it's like moving from Chicago or the Midwest or Denver to Boston, but I know coming from Boston to Denver, it was a bit of adjustment. I, I think there is a, a certain different, um, I don't know if it's personality or what, but things felt a little slower, a little more relaxed in Denver. So when you get to Boston, it, it might feel fast. It might feel abrupt. It might feel um, a little off-putting, but I think that the, Boston in particular, once you get to know it, it feels really like almost like a small town where th there's a, a familiarity there and, and a, a sense of family there. Like people in Boston feel like they're in it together. And so kind of once you crack that nut and you're no longer that outsider or that tourist, you'll be welcomed with such warmness that it's, it'll feel like home no matter where you're from. Yeah, in, in a similar vein. So um, coming from New Hampshire, you know, obviously really close to Boston, um, I guess, you know, there wasn't much of a culture adjustment, but I, I found a, a lot of my friends and um, lifelong friends, you know, were from all over the country, uh, like for whatever reason, my freshman year dorm had a lot of people from Minnesota. And so I felt like I know a ton of people from Minnesota. Um, and I think one of the, the, the greatest things about DC is that, um, and I think maybe Danny uh, mentioned this before, is like, you know, just the location, like you are 15, 10 to 15 minutes from downtown Boston. So world-class museums, restaurants, you know, major sporting uh, teams. Um, but if you don't want that in your face all the time, you have like just a gorgeous campus and a really, you know, small tight-knit community um, where you don't have to feel like you're, you're in the middle of a concrete jungle. Um, and so that I think is, and, and the other thing I guess I would mention too, is, you know, there's so many different campus groups depending on, uh, interests. Um, and, and so, um, you know, it's, it's not hard to find, uh, both like-minded people, but also people that, you know, want to challenge you. And if you have different interests that, you know, maybe you want to explore something new, there, there are so many groups to do that with. And so, um, I, I don't necessarily think that like, you know, from a, a culture shock perspective, if you're coming from a small town or you're coming from a major city, uh, being in Boston, um, maybe if you're coming from Arizona or Florida, the, the winter, I guess it would be the only thing. But other than that, um, you know, it, it's not hard to find your place. You know, I, I would reflect on um, both of our kids, our son, Patrick, uh, coming from Chicago, I remember him reflecting that, wow, Boston's a really small city. Um, he was very surprised by that, um, he, you know, even though we had been there several times. Um, and I would say for our daughter, who was a year behind him, um, her experience, she, she obviously knew exactly that's where she wanted to be. And she was very excited to be there and knew all about it. And, um, you know, she was really uh, homesick. She was very homesick. And she was very happy, quite frankly, that she was not a car ride away because she really had to be resilient and she you know 
got out of her comfort zone um, first semester freshman year. Uh, again, her brother was there, but you know it wasn't his job to make her happy. So um, she really found her way. And I think if she had been closer to home, she would not have been able to do that. So she appreciated that experience of Boston. I think that just the other thing I'll mention, I feel like everyone hit on hit on everything I would have said, but just the fact that you live with other first year students um, is hugely helpful. And that is pretty unique, I would say. Um, just the fact that, yeah, I was from New York, so I wasn't far from home, but everyone's kind of in it together, especially like when you're trying to figure out where where is this class on campus or how's that going or you're in classes together. It was so nice to feel like, okay, I have this kind of safe space. Like everyone knows exactly what we're going through. You know, it, it did take time to to adjust, but I, I would say for myself, it was quicker than I probably expected because I did feel very much at home. And I think that community piece just played such a big part in it. Wonderful. And you know, we've touched on a little bit about those friendships that you formed when, during your undergraduate years and, and getting involved with clubs and organizations. Um, I, I, I can uh, pretty much guarantee that every student in our audience would like, it would be very interested to hear what you gravitated toward um, during your undergraduate years and how did you uh, create a, a little bit of uh, balance and, and social outlet um, in your lives? Um, I can go first. I, um, I, again, it feels so dated to talk about any of our experiences, but um, I had a work study job. So I had a job on campus and I worked in um, what was then the Office of Student Activities. And um, I was an English major, so I had no idea what I was going to do. And I sat in that office and thought, oh, I could, I could do what these people do. And so that I got my master's in higher ed. And so, you know, just by chance, it really shaped what I wanted to do professionally. Um, and so that was a really important, that work study job was a huge, huge, huge thing for me. I was involved with a couple different things on campus. Service was a big part of my experience. So I was part of the Appalachia Volunteers Program. It's alternative spring break trips. So I went on three uh, as I was a participant and then I was a trip leader. And that was an amazing experience because it was actually just getting out of you know Boston, getting off campus and really being in a new part of the country, engaging with a community and really, again, thinking about, okay, when we bring this back, what does this actually mean for my day-to-day -day experience? And, and what I want to do beyond my time there. Um, I was also um, a research assistant for a professor in the communications department, and it was just a professor I'd taken a couple classes with, and I would just often go to office hours because I was really interested in the material, and um, it ultimately he was like, hey, you're around here a lot. Do you want to actually work for me? Um, so that was amazing. He ended up being my thesis advisor. Um, so I think, again, like those relationships with professors were so rich. Um, and then I also was uh, really lucky to work in the student admissions office. Um, I love talking about my BC experience. So I was like, oh, I get to do this all the time. So I was really involved with that community. And it really, uh, I met so many great people that I'm still very close with during that time. Yeah, I, I would just add, um, so I also, I did work study, um, you know, was in a program there, worked in the library, uh, which was great. Um, I used I mean, the city of Boston is just an amazing resource. So taking the tea in, you know, 15 minutes, uh, going to a Red Sox game, going to museums, just walking around the city, um, you know, uh, with, with, with classmates uh, was, was really awesome experience. Um, and the last thing that I would just add um, uh, is just the study abroad programs, which at least when I was there were, um, you know, really, really popular. I, I don't know the exact percentage, but I think it was over 50% of the uh, you know juniors uh, did at least one semester abroad, um, and so I did a full year abroad um, in London. Um, but it was with um, a, a group of uh, BC students, um, some of which went to the same school as that uh, as I did. Um, but within London, I think there were three or four different programs, and so that was also a really unique experience. Um, and and um, you know, one of, one of my best memories, not necessarily at BC, but getting to do a, a study abroad program with other BC students um, was uh, was one of the best, best experiences that I had. 
I, I don't, I, I'm probably not the model one to answer this, frankly. I, uh, I had my hands full with school and work. So I, I live vicariously through my friends, and my roommates, uh, you know, I, I support them in their acapella groups or their uh, service trips. I, um, there's no shortage of stuff to do, but I, I did not do much of it. I, I feel like once I left BC, I realized how much I took for granted all the opportunities that were there. I think, uh, you know, for me, uh, I did a little service uh, things, uh, you know, the, the service programs weren't nearly as robust as they are today. Um, so we did some things on campus and a couple of things uh, in the city of Boston, but, uh, but a lot of my time, my free time was spent uh, playing the intramurals with, you know, the guys on my floor, um, you know, friends that again, are lifelong friends right now. And we still laugh about our softball, co-ed softball championship that we, uh, that we squeaked by uh, to win, but, you know, we've got the mug somewhere here to, to show uh, to show the victory. You'll have to explain the tradition of the mug, the, the, the highly sought after mug in intramural sports. Uh, anyone want to take a step just so to share with our audience? <laughs> So the championship mug is is kind of a tradition at well it is a tradition not kind of um, so with it within intramural sports uh, it is I, I guess what would be equivalent to Olympic gold medal um, at Boston College for intramural sports so it is a point of pride and longstanding tradition and clearly people keep it on a shelf somewhere in their home uh, for years to come so and. Uh, great place, a, a great point of reminiscing. Um, you know, and I think too, it's so much of what we talk about for the student formation piece is that students, like Danny was mentioning, that you had your work study job, your your schoolwork, and really trying to figure out what your major is going to be. Noah, you switched schools as an undergraduate. So there is a lot of navigation and it's not going to be the same pathway for everybody. But what I love about BC is that it still remains a place that for everybody, you can find your own path. You can carve out your own niche. Um, and it's not something that is ne necessarily that, that it's going to be the same experience for everybody. Um, but you'll, you'll find those moments of connection um, for yourself that you, again, feel very much a part of university life and, and you're there with your peers and sharing those experiences, the highs and lows um, of uh, undergraduate education um, with, a, with a great deal of celebration at the end of it. Um, this is kind of also leading up to one of the questions that was asked, it was actually directed at Noah, but I think it's applicable to everybody. Um, so there's a student that, that did ask about um, a student who has been admitted to the Carroll School of Management is um, living currently in the Chicago area, but one day may want to uh, move to Denver. Um, and I think we've kind of touched on this for, for so many of our panelists this evening that you currently do not reside where you grew up. Um, and I think for a lot of students right now, not only they're trying to make so many decisions in a short amount of time, but they're also trying to think about what lies ahead for them. And you know, where there's almost a culture of being scared of taking risks in your life, whether it be during your undergraduate years to studying up, choosing to study abroad, finding internships, which major you should decide on, that that's going to be the blueprint for the rest of your life, um, to perhaps when you graduate, moving to a brand new city that you don't have connections in, or maybe even a couple of years after graduation. So if you were to think about like giving some advice, whether our students in the audience end up coming to Boston College or go elsewhere, if you were to think about those four years, that short window of time that will go by, by far too quickly for, for them, what would advice would you want them to take away with and so that they make the most of their opportunities um, and, and really focus on not just their intellectual development, but also the personal development? Yeah, I, I would say um, my advice, and um, if I could go back and do those four years over again, would be, you know, to just 
try as and do as many different things as possible. Uh, you know, extracurriculars, but also in terms of the classwork, just, you know, if there's a particular subject or something you think you might be interested in, like take a class or two in that, like, even if it doesn't fit with your major or your minor, um, you know, that may take you down a totally different path than you initially thought. Because I think for me, um, you know, I kind of, you know, the, the economics major, like it was what I was interested in. Um, but there were a lot of other, a lot of other classes I took that I found like, okay, this is something that, you know, also is interesting. It might be a potential career for me. Um, and so, you know, I guess my advice would be just not, not necessarily coming in as a freshman thinking, okay, this is the track I'm going to be on. This is, you know, what my next four years going to be like. And I have to, you know, check these, these boxes in this time frame. Um, just being flexible um, because, Maybe the other thing I would say too is, you know, I graduated in 02, uh, which was a terrible year in the job market. And so a lot of, you know, people like you, you never know, you know, great job market, average job market, bad job market. You never know what the environment's going to be like when you come out. And so you might as well just, you know, do what makes you happy in those four years. Um, because in the long term, I think, you know, that's going to set you up, you know, for, you know, professional success, but also just like personal happiness. I think that's, that's, you know, ultimately, you know, what's going to, what's going to drive that. Building on what Noah said, I, I wouldn't look at your time at BC as a means to an end, or certainly not as just, you know, the path that's taking you to your conclusion. It's more like a pit stop. You stop there, you refuel, you gather tools, you gather what you need, and then you go back to your journey. There's no way to know what you want to do for the rest of your life when you're 18 years old. Probably not when you're 21 years old either. Um, take the time and explore. Like Noah said, take those electives that you are curious about, you have no idea what it is, pop in and see if you like it. Do the extracurriculars, spend time just talking to people on your floor, because God only knows what you're gonna learn from them, but it's probably be pretty meaningful. Uh, it might not feel it at the time, but later on, I bet it's gonna serve you well. It, look at your time at BC as a time to prepare yourself for the rest of your life, not the beginning of the rest of your life. It, it's, you, you don't know what's gonna stick with you, so be open to as much as you can. I would agree with so much of that. I mean, honestly, like I really never thought I would be doing what I'm doing now or, or really have a passion for this work in education without my BC experience. Like I think in so many ways, the opportunities that I had both in my classes and then and also some of those involvements that I mentioned really did help me like more clearly define, okay, this is what I feel called to and I want to explore that further. Um, I think also I would say it's really a good thing to not know exactly what you want to do. Um, like I said, I came in totally undeclared. I had other friends so that were in the business school, that were in the Lynch School of Education, and they were on a pretty set track and that was right for them. So if that's the case for you, I think that's that's amazing. But it, if, if you're not feeling that way, like know that when you come to BC, you're just going to be challenged constantly and you're going to really just grow so much. So lean into that. Don't be afraid to kind of, you know, talk to those professors in office hours, take the class that maybe you hear is more challenging because all of those things are just going to make you better at whatever you do, do after. I, I feel like I say that all the time. Like I really feel like BC just made me a better version of myself and it has enabled me to just do even more than I could have imagined starting off there. I think building off of uh, Bridget's experience and her uh, very eloquent uh, response there, um, you know, really that the benefit of a, a place like BC is uh, engaging with the professors, right? So, you know, the overwhelming, you know, majority of your classes are going to be taught by full professors. They have office hours. They want you to come see them. So if, if you're interested, if you're challenged, if you don't know what's going on in class, go see them, right? And, and get to know them. They're incredible resources. And, and, and I, I only scratched the surface. Our daughter did a really good job of engaging her professors and she ended up much like Bridget working for one of them. She did other stuff for another one. I mean, it was just really phenomenal what, what is available to those folks that actually take the first step. And, you know, and, and BC is the, the whole campus has students like that, but very few people actually take that step. So, um, so I encourage you, whether it's BC or you know similar sized universities that that make the professors available um, in that regard, it's a huge asset, and it's it will help you 
in that class as well as every step along your way. This is such great advice. I know that we could probably go for another 15, 20 minutes on this, but to just kind of wrap things up for um, our audience uh, this evening, there have been so many questions about internships and how to make the most of your experience and where do I live and how do I find that network? Um, I think, you know, it's also those relationships that you mentioned with your, with your friends, you know, that, and they may not live in your your home state or where you're living right now. Do you still feel connected to your friends? And how do you how do you maintain those relationships um, with your friends from BC? So um, um, go ahead, no. Go. Oh yeah, so I would just say, so out of, out of my, my closest like DC friends uh, right now, you know, spread across the country, I'd say we kind of make it a goal, like, you know, in a, in a normal year to try and get together every you know, 12 to 18 months, you know, somewhere in the country. Um, but, you know, of my closest friends, you know, the six, the, the five other guys that I lived with uh, senior year, um, then just other friends, you know, it, it spread out. Some stayed in Boston, uh, some are in Texas now, some are on the West Coast, moved back home. Um, somewhere in the Midwest. And so it, it's really all over. Um, but I, I think the main point is like, um, you know, these are, these are lifelong friends. And so um, the network is there and, and you know, it's, it, it's just great. Like it's one of the, the things I most look forward to, you know, every year is kind of like that, that BC friends reunion. Um, and, you know, whether it's in Denver or me going, you know, back to Boston, um, it, it's kind of, it, you know, it's one of the highlights of the year. So um, the, the friendships you make truly are are lifelong and lasting. Um, and and you know, uh, of the friends I have too, you know, we all have different careers, different family lives, things like that. And so it's not like we were all you know econ majors or all business school or nursing majors. Um, it is truly like you know just a hodgepodge of, of different interests and and different personalities. And you know, it's it's a really it's a really special thing to say now looking back. You know, I guess almost 20 years after graduating, that these are these are the best friends that I have are are, are from uh, from Boston College. Um, so our daughter was supposed to get married last year uh, in March of 2020, and so we had a we had a table, we had a Boston College table of pushing first boys and their mm -hmm. spouses, and um, they are our lifelong friends, and um, we we ended up zooming with them every Friday for almost six months yeah. um, just, and it was great. We stayed connected in ways that we couldn't have imagined. And, um, you know, because our kids are BC alums, they are now connected to our friends. And it's, it has, uh, again, just been a really, a, a real gift for us. Living in Chicago, um, you know, people, a lot of people live on the East Coast and being in Chicago, it felt far away 35 years ago. Um, <laughs> And, and so we were really, really lucky that um, we maintained some significant relationships um, throughout the years. I would say um, game weekends are a really fun time for reunions. I've gone back to a lot of, of BC football games. Um, all my closest friends live in Boston, so I'm kind of the outlier. So it's easy for me to go there. But it was also really fun. Um, two of my best friends came out for the BC Notre Dame game, and I was able to host them on campus in South Bend. And um, finally, I was like, ah, I have people on my side. This is what I've been waiting for. Um, but yeah, I, honestly, my BC friends, uh, are, we're, we're still so close. There's always the people that I go to, especially I think during this year, which is how challenging it's been, like just having them to lean on and, and knowing you have that consistent presence um, was just so helpful. So even though we haven't lived in the same place for a number of years since we graduated, still my, my go-to people. It, it's Noah touched on, I, th I think everyone's mentioned it. it. These are lifelong friends and you might lose touch. You might fall out of touch. You might go months without speaking to each other. But when you do, it's like you never left. I know, I, God, right before the virus, I was driving across Massachusetts to go to the airport. And I said, I called my friend with two hours of notice. I said, I'm driving right past your house. Are you around? And they dropped what they were doing and we went and we got lunch and just 
because that's how it is. And it's, it's been the same way out in Denver. It's, hey, I'm swinging by Denver. My car broke down. Can I borrow your car? Of course you can. I know I haven't talked to you in three years, but of course you can. Um, <laughs> and, and that's the way it is. And it, on, a, on a different note, you know, as the alumni out, group director out here, I've seen so many different relationships, so many different rekindlings of relationships. Um, on a sad note, a couple of years ago, one of our alumnus passed away suddenly and I attended his funeral. All of his roommates were there. I think he was class of 67 or something like that. And all of his roommates came out to the funeral and many of them hadn't seen each other in years, and, but right back into it. And they were telling stories from college and the life and I never met any of them, but because we shared BC, it felt like I had known them for years and they felt like they had known me for years and I was with them in school. It, it's such a unique environment that stays with you forever. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, all of you. The, these questions and your responses have been so thoughtful. And I just want to thank our audience for um, really you know, taking that deeper dive and with those more, I think, getting to greater authenticity um, and what can feel very impersonal um, on video screen. So uh, just to kind of close out, Bridget, I, I did see a last question that came through the Q&A and talking about Jesuit education, the mission of uh, Boston College and how that has played a role in your life. And I think the work that you've done since you graduated from, from BC certainly speaks to that. And others, feel free, please uh, feel welcome to, to um, offer your reflections as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm happy to start. I, I think in so many ways, um, like I've mentioned, th there was just this very clear focus on how are you going to use the education that you have um, to make some sort of difference in the world. Um, Father Michael Himes, who teaches on campus, kind of presents these three questions of what brings you joy, what are you good at, and what does the world need from you? And those three questions have followed me at every stage of, of my life, I would say, because I think at BC, and it's very much rooted in the Jesuit Catholic tradition, it's this idea of how can we become men and women for and with others. So that rings true in the campus community, right? Like how are we showing up and supporting one another and helping one another, one another to grow into you know, who we're supposed to become, but also to take that a step further. And um, my postgraduate path obviously had like more of a, a direct kind of service component as I was doing a postgrad service experience and, and I was teaching and, and forming and serving students. But I think that is, completely the case in sort of whatever you pr pursue after. I think just that mentality uh, of service and having that be at the forefront of your work um, is, is so vital. So I would say, again, it just totally transformed my trajectory and, and my career and, and the work that I now do in education. Um, and I think that would follow you in, in kind of whatever, whatever path you pursue after BC. gets ingrained in you right I think everyone else on the phone like it, it it doesn't feel like it's something that you get drilled on it doesn't feel like it's a forceful um push but by your by the time you leave BC you it is in you and you live it and whether it draws you to move into service or to care for others I think it just shapes how your daily interactions go you're, you're a more thoughtful conscientious person and it makes you easier to work with regardless of what you're doing, whether it's service, whether it's finance, whether it's administration, it doesn't matter. You are just an easier person to get along with and you strive to build those up around you. And so it's only gonna do good things for you in life. I think that is just so beautifully stated. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Bridget. And I'm sure, well, Noah and RJ and Berta could easily echo those comments. Um, I'm noticing the time, we're almost up at the hour. So this might be a great uh, opportunity for us to bid our audience a wonderful evening um, and uh, congratulations once again. If you have remaining questions, please feel welcome to reach out to our office. 
Um, we continue to have virtual programming available to you, which you can access through your admission portal. Um, if you uh, need any help, please again, reach out to us. But um, I would just really like to sincerely thank our alumni um, uh, panelists this evening, uh, Bridget, Berta, RJ, Danny, and Noah for giving up their time as they always do with incredible grace and enthusiasm, no matter what the setting is, but looking forward to this being a return to in-person. Um, congratulations and in, in, uh, in 2022. So thanks again, everyone. And uh, we wish you the very best in the coming weeks as you make your decision. Thank you. Thanks for hosting, Mary Beth. And thanks, uh, congrats to all the, the, uh, the uh, new admits. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.